his newborn son and heir. God help my kingdom. One son means peace, but two means anarchy. The birth of two heirs to the throne of France remained a closely guarded secret. Now, 15 years later, the elder twin reigns as King Louis XIV, unaware of the existence of his brother, Philippe. ago, uh, the year in which our beloved queen gave us an heir to the throne of France, there appeared in the night sky above the village of Überbeigelschnitz uh, in the black forest of Germany. Uh, look up Überbeigelschnitz. Which atlas, Monsieur Lacoste? Uh, second from the left. Above the village, as I say, there appeared in the eastern sky a two-tailed comet traveling towards Paris. Oh, uh, so said the mayor of Uberbangel. Uh, Uberbangel! Uberbangel! <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh dear, uh, where was I? The mayor. Oh! Uh, tell that ragamuffin to desist. At once, Monsieur Lacoste. Come on! Shh! The mayor of Uberbangelschnitz got out of bed to throw something at a yowling cat. He opened the shutter, and behold, there was the comet. Which brings us, as I say, to the questions. Do the movements of heavenly bodies cause events on Earth, or vice versa? Uh, uh, read these almanacs, and these, and write me 17 pages. No less, and no more. Now, off you go. Go on, go for your ride. Monsieur Lacoste, will the grand lady from Paris visit us today? She visits us every six months, Philippe. Who sends her? Your benefactor. Who is my benefactor? Your benefactor lives in Paris, Philippe. Go for your ride. Monsieur Lacoste, who were my father and mother? Go for your ride!
benefactor is? No. Of course not. Why, of course? I'm not important, am I? You're very important to me. What's more? I don't ask questions. Because them who do get sent away. So all is quiet, Perrin. No questions, no suspicions. And the boy is happy? Yes, madame. Do his studies go well? Uh, they do, madame. Does he receive religious instruction? He does, my lord. There he is now, sir. It's the grand lady from Paris. Shall I call him? Will you examine him yourself? Your word is enough, Perron. Here is the letter from our mistress. Our humble duty to our mistress, madame. We think of her each day. She thinks of you, Lacoste. And of the boy. Who is it? Me. Who else would it be?
my secret benefactor is the Queen of France. Lazy boy. Philippe. Philippe, what does this mean? <gasps> he knows. He's read the letter. He knows? Are you sure? Uh, where was the letter? It must have blown down the well. Down to them. Oh, poor boy. He's so honest. What are we to do? We must do our duty and inform the Queen. <laughs> but what am I to do, my Lord Bishop? Your Majesty, what can you do except act for the good of France? There's nothing wrong. Monsieur Philippe? Uh, yes? Seize him. Monsieur Lacoste, help me! Athos, this is all too grand for a retired country gentleman like me. My clothes are years out of date. But your stout heart, Porthos, will always be in fashion. Look, here's an old friend. What? Aramis? Is it you, old boy? I am now the Bishop of Van Porthos. Where have you been all these years? In the country. So I see. This is Monsieur Fouquet, the king's chief minister. Monsieur Fouquet? Oh, my goodness, what an honor, sir. I never thought to meet so important a man as yourself. Your servant, sir. Your esteemed servant. Athos? Do all courtiers behave so rudely? They look after themselves, old friend. Oh, who looks after France? Aramis, in his way, I believe. I'm afraid I never did like him. Neither did D'Artagnan. Well, we won't discuss that now, Porthos. Look, there's the king's mother, the old queen, and her lady-in-waiting, Madame de Chevreuse. And that, who's that bad-tempered gentleman? That's Monsieur Colbert, the king's second minister, and Fouquet's deadly enemy. I'm glad he's not my enemy, I must say. Do you see how Colbert fumes? 
What a vulgar cockroach the man is. I have a plan, sir, that will establish you forever in the king's favor and crush cockroach Colbert. You have? Invite the king to your mansion at Vaux. Flatter him with his own portrait. Astonish him with music and fireworks. Make him feel a king. I will, my lord bishop. What a staunch friend you are. His Sacred Majesty, King Louis XIV of France. D'Artagnan. And where is your old friend Porthos? Here, Your Majesty! God save Your Majesty! You are welcome, sir, because we know how well you served our father. So, what business do we have today? Monsieur Colbert seeks a private audience. In which I hope, with the aid of these papers, sir, to p prove that Monsieur Fouquet has spent millions of your taxes upon his own house at Vaux-le-Vicomte. <laughs> I am outraged, sire, and I utterly deny the charge. Naturally. What else do you say? Sire, I invite you and your court to be my guests at Vaux, where you may judge my loyalty for yourself. We accept. Astound us, Fouquet. Our court will travel to Vaux. You'll be the most fashionable man at Vogue. Fashionable? He'll be... Yeah. Halt! Wherever you are, halt! Now, return the needle to me. Oh, perfect. Magnificent. My masterpiece, even if I am 83 years old. I say, Percerin, can we move? Uh, Monsieur d'Artagnan, you know better than to enter this establishment like a cavalry charge. The fact is, we want a new coat for our old friend Porthos here. You've got dozens of coats. They've all shrunk. Sh shrunk? My coats do not shrink, Monsieur Porthos. Gentlemen, expand. All the same, uh, you can oblige, eh, Pesserin? Uh, measure this gentleman. Two tapes for Monsieur Porthos. Two tapes? <laughs> One to measure my honor, no doubt. Good old Porthos, good old boy. I say, D'Artagnan, I like that green silk over there. That, Monsieur is the most expensive material in all Paris, for a part, of course, from the lengths woven solely for His Majesty. It doesn't look very expensive. It came from China on the backs of elephants. Oh, good. I'll have it. <coughs> what size is, monsieur? <gasps> well, come on, Percerin. We can bear it. Tell us the worst. Waste 482. Oh, enough. Do you want my last tooth to fall out? Monsieur d'Artagnan, 
a word, if I may? Courage, old boy. <laughs> All I can say is few. Uh, few? One thing that I had forgotten about Paris is that it takes more courage to enter a tailor than to fight a battle. Monsieur d'Artagnan, elephants may have brought this cloth to France, but I will not ruin it to make a suit for a rhinoceros. A rhinoceros? Your friend. Monsieur Percerin, you are the king of tailors, and we obey your every whim. The fact is, my dear old Porthos, so many gentlemen want new clothes for the fete that there is insufficient material to cover you. You mean I've got to wear this old thing? I'm afraid so. Oh, that's less than I've deserved. Your devotion to France deserves whatever you want, old friend. Bravo, Aramis. Bravo. Monsieur Percerin, I have a request from Monsieur Fouquet. He wishes to astonish the king with a portrait. Uh, might the artist come here to sketch his majesty's new coat, which is already called your masterpiece? Here it is, my lord. Of course, your painter may recall it for posterity. Aramis, will you dine with us? Alas, I cannot. I have religious duties to perform. What's that? More of the Bastille's inhabitants. <laughs> this is the cell, Your Honor. Wait here. Who are you? What do you want? Your name is Philippe, is it not? I remember you, but where from? Your childhood. When you lived with Lacoste and Perron in the old manor house. My childhood? Did I have a childhood? Is your name Philippe? Yes. Can you place me? Yes. You accompanied the lady who came every month from the Queen. I mean... From my benefactor? Yes, that is correct. I am Aramis, Bishop of Van. And how long have you been here? I am not allowed to speak. Do you know why you are here? Strange. You are without a mirror. Now, compare your face with this. Who painted this? How can he know what I look like? The portrait is not of you. It is of His Majesty King Louis XIV. The King? Your brother, sire. My brother? Your identical twin. Everything is explained, is it not? Yes. Everything is explained. Do you wish to escape from this place? Yes. Your wish, sire, is my command. What you are saying is that one good turn deserves another. What do you want? A letter of release for a prisoner in the Bastille. 
What prisoner? I will write in the name. Impossible! The prisoner, I assure you, will not harm His Majesty the King. Will you swear to that? Then I agree. The order is signed by Monsieur Fouquet. Drive on! Your Majesty, I have dreamed of this moment for many years. Yet the choice is yours. I can send you to a safe place where no one will find you and you can live quietly in freedom forever. Or, if you will appoint me your chief minister, I can make you the king of France. I repeat, the choice is yours. You forget that I owe loyalty to my brother. Your brother, sire, listens to evil men. What evil men? Fouquet, Colbert. But what France needs is honesty. Which I can give? Yes, sire, you can. Sir, take me to where the throne of France is to be found. my honor to welcome the Sun King to my modest chateau. Thank you, Fouquet. This way, sire. Sergeant, post your sentries. Sir. This, sire, is where you will rest. The chamber of Morpheus, the god of sleep, who is, you will observe, painted on the ceiling. Yes. Study him. Learn all you can for when you take his place. Look at him. Fouquet actually believes that he can save himself by groveling. How can any of us save ourselves, Monsieur Colbert? from unexpected fate. Uh, more chicken legs, more wine! <laughs> A passable likeness, Monsieur Fouquet. You must do better if your entertainments are to astonish us. Indeed, sire, our display of ballet and fireworks has been designed to reflect the splendor of Louis XIV, the Sun King of France.
You have proven Fouquet's guilt. No amount of fireworks and splendor can alter his fate. It is merely my duty, sire. We will seize his possessions and banish him. He has betrayed our trust, unlike you, our loyal Colbert. Porthos, for the sake of friendship and our old loyalties, may I swear you to secrecy? A secret? I'll say you may. France is in danger. Don't ask how. A mission must be accomplished. Will you help me? Dangerous, eh? You may rely upon me. And France may rely upon me also. Yes, indeed. Such loyalty deserves its reward. And no doubt the king will make you a duke. I? A duke? On my honor. I'm your man. Meet me in the cellars at midnight. At midnight. Is braver. Look, we have this. My brother's coat. A copy. A perfect fit. So, is my brother in his chamber? He is, Your Majesty. There, that settles the business of Monsieur Fouquet. We will deal with him in the morning. Now leave us, we are fatigued. Perfect. Now, start the mechanism. I'm the King of France. There was a mistake. That prisoner is never to be released. Ah! 
King ignores me. Monsieur Fouquet, side with me and you will become ten times as rich as you are now. How can that be? Walk with us and I will tell you what has happened. I am a man of honor. I will not save myself at the price of a crime and, who knows, of a civil war. But there are two identical kings. Captain d'Artagnan! Sir? Arrest these men. They have betrayed France. What? Oh, oh come on, d'Artagnan, old boy. We're friends. Musketeers, arrest these men. has been a mistake. This prisoner will be released and come with me. Courage, sire. All is not lost. Your Majesty's mother, Queen Anne, and Madame de Chevreuse. Good morning, mother. I, we, trust you slept well. Very well indeed, thank you, Louis. Madame de Chevreuse? Your Majesty. Might I say that Your Majesty looks particularly refreshed this morning? We thank you, Madame, and return the compliment. Monsieur Colbert. Monsieur Colbert. Good morning. More papers, I see? Your Majesty, more proof against Monsieur Fouquet. Captain d'Artagnan? Sire. Where is Monsieur Fouquet? Sire, he has gone to Paris. To Paris? Why can that be? On account of some danger against your person, sire. Danger to our person? What can endanger our person except Monsieur Fouquet? <laughs> we do not jest, Colbert. <coughs> Where is the Bishop of Vannes? Sire. Aramis is under arrest. Under arrest? By whose orders? Monsieur Fouquet's. Release him. We have an important announcement to make concerning our good Bishop of Vannes. Make way for the king. Make way. The king? I, we are the king. Well, brother. Brother, mother, acknowledge us as the king. Mother, acknowledge us as the king. I, uh, uh, oh. Monsieur Fouquet, who is this imposter? D'Artagnan, which of us is truly the king?
Monsieur, you are my prisoner. But I trusted you, Aramis, and you have betrayed me. Fool. What? Fat fool. I deserve better than that, Aramis. After all these years. What we deserve, Porthos, is what we get. Aramis. Porthos, I've pleaded for your lives, and the king has granted them. But you'll be exiled forever. Now, here's someone to say farewell. Old friends, how could you do it? I wanted to be a duke. I wanted to create dukes. I regret nothing. As for you, Monsieur Fouquet, do not think that your show of loyalty has impressed us. You are dismissed. Monsieur Colbert here will take your place. Oh. Oh, do stop crying, mother. My punishment is just, mother. I was foolish. I believed that the bishop's lies were true. Now I must bear it like the king I am. Our lads, a mask fit for a king. Or would be king. Right on time, Boulanger. Kindly have this box taken aboard. We sail immediately. At once, Captain D'Artagnan. Or defy it for no man. 
Hold your course, I say. Brioche! Again! Kill him, I say, and eat the feather in his hat. My feather is a badge of honor. I cannot save you from this imprisonment, even though on the boat you saved my life. I am a soldier, and I obey my orders. I serve France, but never so well as you, who by accepting this punishment have saved us all from civil war. I must go now to Paris to tell your brother that his will has been done. D'Artagnan. I am forever your majesty's obedient servant. Long live the king! <laughs> 